This is an ACB community call presented by American Council of the Blind. This Unmute Presents community call was hosted on Tuesday, June 6, 2023. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unmute. We want to get everyone's tech questions answered. So go ahead and raise your hands and we'll get to you as quickly as possible after a couple of announcements here. We also want to remind everyone we're going to go through all the first hands up. And if we have enough time, we'll take second hands and be respectful to everyone as you would want to be for yourself to get everyone's questions answered, no matter how easy or tough you may think they are, because we always say there's no dumb questions. Michael, how you doing? I am doing well. I tried to get Mallory to come live with us today. She called me right as Chanel's announcement was playing. And I'm like, we're live in like 30 seconds. You want to go live with me? And she got off the phone real fast. She was not interested. Oh, well, <laughs> one of these days we'll have to get her on. That will be a first because she's never been on any of my podcasts. Uh, intentionally, intentionally. Anyways, uh, so Marty, we've been publishing some interesting things over at Unmute, haven't we? Yeah, a couple of things here and there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Technically working dropped yesterday with Demasi and I, if you haven't listened to that. And you want 110 minutes. Marty loves those longer episodes of ramblingness between Demasi and myself. Go capture that episode. Uh, and then on Sunday, I posted a follow-up to a question someone had asked us related to the NumPad commander on the Mac. Uh, interesting thing there is I learned how I should probably configure my numpad commander because i have it configured in a way that mm, probably could be done more uh, reliably and then uh, lynn and marty sat down talked about some tech things on uh friday so there was that episode that dropped and then on thursday as we typically do we had something a little bit more in depth and that was a fun episode with allison sheridan from the pod feet empire uh, so if you're interested in that learning more about how she as a sighted Mac user tests some apps for accessibility and what she's done with podcasting and some fun adventures, uh, real worth the listen. Then we posted on the Shell Phone Show on Wednesday of last week, accessing the manual on the Blind Shell Classic 2. Once you have that Blind Shell Classic 2, how do you go and learn more about operating the device itself? And then, of course, we had the ACB Community Call replay for May 30th. We're already in June. Can you believe it, Marty? Crazy. I know. We're halfway through the year already. It seems like I'm still getting over the holidays. Definitely. Uh, let's go take some of these hands and then stay tuned because we have a cool demo uh, that we will show you before the end of the hour that's exciting that I guarantee some of you will be using this summer. Monica, who do we have first? Doc. Hey, Doc. How are you doing? You are muted. Good morning. Later. Oh, there you are. Hope I'm unmuted. Yep. You are. Yeah. We can hear you. Well, Okay, I was going to give you a report on how to delete uh, mail folders. I told you once before I was just deleting them and they were coming back. So I finally have figured out the routine. Okay. Okay, when you're in email, you hit F6 until you get the mail folders tree view. Arrow to the folder you want to delete. Press the application key or shift F10 if you don't have one, and then down arrow to delete folder, and voila, it is gone forever. And you have to hit enter a second time to confirm that you do want to delete it. Right. So that's how it goes away forever. So you I just are thought awesome, I'd let Doc. you know. Thank you. Thanks, I Doc. Appreciate that's awesome. It. Yeah, appreciate your directions. Um, okay. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Next, we have Beth. Hey, Beth. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, um, I just just saw that you, um, uh, Michael, that uh, just went, just noticed um, that you had sent me an email. Yep. Uh, and I didn't read it yet, but I just noticed that before this call. But I also have a problem um, when I get into the app games, it will, no matter if I swipe, like usually you hear at the very top of the screen, like a look, um, Wi Fi and cats Wi Fi, and then um, orientation, like stuff like that will 
my phone just says it no matter where you go on the screen. So, and I don't know why it does that. Yep. I have an idea for you, Beth, because I saw your email and I didn't have an immediate answer. Um, but I think I might know what's going on. What I want you to try doing is, and I can email these steps to you after the show as well, change your rotor to screen recognition and it'll probably say on and flick down once and it should say off. And I think then yeah. that might actually fix it. My Mine did say off because I had asked on iPhone and iPad apps for the blind and visually impaired. I did ask about the games. Okay. And she said, Tur- make sure your rec- screen recognition is turned off. And mine is. Interesting. Okay. So I don't know. I don't have another answer for you. That might be one to reach out to the Apple accessibility team and they may be able to yeah, remote into your and, phone and see what's going on there. Okay. And I emailed them yesterday. I can't. <laughs> Is um, iPhone 13 mini, that should be a good phone. Yep. Good, yep, that's, right? a, that's a perfectly good phone. It was released uh, a, a year back, ago. Yeah, a year, a year, over a year ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, so email is fine, but Beth, what I actually recommend is just give them a call. Okay, I'll call and them And if you again. need, I'll email you their phone number, but give them a call because then you get someone on the phone and they can answer the questions you have. Emails can get lost, as we've all learned. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. So. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Beth. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Next, we have Herbie. All right, Chris Me. Hey, Chris. Hey, what's going on, fellas? How you doing? Great, hey, Chris. Hey, so uh, question: What did you guys think about the um, WWDC as far as the VR headset? Do you think that might have some interesting potential for low vision individuals or, or people that are, you know, high partials? Um, and if so, what would that be entailing? Interesting question. Um, We've talked <laughs> about this question, actually. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to jump in, and give your thoughts, and then I can give my thoughts? Um, well, so far, my thoughts are I haven't seen anything in terms of low vision or no vision accessibility yet. So it's one of those things where we're kind of waiting to see what and how it's going to be used. There is an accessibility um, talk that's going to be coming up sometime this week, and we're hoping they're going to talk about it during that session. Um, and then also they always announce things and they always don't announce things. And then they bring them as the year goes on before the gold master gets sent out. So we're going to see what happens here and we're going to see how they're going to implement it for accessibility, but it's so new. We don't really know yet, but we're hoping that there will be some benefit. And this is a great representation to show you that Marty does not spend any time on social media because it was confirmed <laughs> yesterday that voiceover will be supported on the VR headset. So, I saw that too, uh, yes. Yeah, which is super exciting. <laughs> and and honestly, I had no, and probably like Marty, I had no doubts that they were going to find a way to have voiceover be supported on this headset. Uh, I've told people on a couple of different shows that I've been on, I will be buying one, probably not this edition, but yes, I will be buying one. How is it going to work for a blind user? I have, uh, I, I, I don't have that answer right now. My, my thought is going to work similar to, you know, Ira, you could put it on and it will read to you what's around you, what's in front of you. If you're walking down, you know, a doctor's hallway and you're looking for the room number you're supposed to go in, or if you're in a hotel and you're looking for your room number or read signs, things like that. I mean, I think that that'll be a really good use case for it. We'll see if they actually do something like that. All right. That sounds great. And one more last question real briefly. Uh, is there anything that we should be aware of in the new iOS 17? Um, I think it was iOS 17, right? That they announced um, during WDC briefly. Yeah, there were some cool features. One that was really something people were liking a lot is uh, if somebody leaves you a voicemail, say like you're in a meeting, it'll transcribe the message well it's leaving the message and you can decide whether it's something important you could pick it up right away right from the voicemail if you want or just leave it and let it go to voicemail so people were excited about that god there were so many things what else michael another thing that i'd recommend you do is if you join in on the bits call tonight i believe herbie at 8 p.m eastern will be talking about it uh as well so that way 
uh, more things that'll come up. I think for me, one of the other cool things that I forgot about until someone else brought it up is the check-in feature. Every time my wife or her mom or, uh, you know, we go anywhere or her sister goes somewhere or any of us, the rule is check in when you get to the place that you're going. So we know everything's okay. Sometimes we forget to do that and, you know, uh, but we do try. And now this can make that automated and just be that extra level of insurance to be able to say, hey, my family is safe. Another thing yeah, is... That was, that was uh, an iMessages app, I'm right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Another thing that was really cool is if you meet someone while you're out and about, you can bump your phones and send your contact information over to their phone. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and in FaceTime, if you call someone and they don't answer, you can actually leave them a video message and they'll get it when they get back to their device. All right. So, well, thank you, fellas. I appreciate your your feedback on WDC a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. All right. We do have one other person in Clubhouse, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hello, everyone. How's it and going? I hope that, well, it's been very frustrating. I hope someone hmm. can help me. Um, I had to switch email providers, so therefore my email address changed. So therefore, I wanted the daily menu to come in. Come and on my new email address because at the end of May, I discontinued my old one. However, I've been working on it for a month and I get no response and I get, I get in every day, it's not there. And I've tried several different things, but nothing seems to be working. So I was hoping that someone can reach out and help me. I, I may actually have a lot easier of a self-help solution. Let me verify that I'm understanding what you're trying to do correctly, though. You're looking to get the daily community emails. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So if in your web browser, you, and I'm doing this right now, so I can verify that I'm telling you this the correct way. But if you go to the, yep. If you go to the uh, website, acb.community, so no.com, just go to acb.community. Um, there's a, that'll take you to a page and there's a pay uh, email address that says ACB community events plus subscribe at groups.io. If you click that link and send a blank email to that email address, you should get a response to email that says, hey, are you sure you want to subscribe to this email list? And just reply to it and hit send like you normally would. And then you should start getting the daily emails. And that should automatically get you on there. Okay, I will try that. And see if that works. And if it doesn't, let us know if it does or if it doesn't. <laughs> but that is, of course, you can always send an email to community at acb.org, but you're looking for more of an automated way. So hopefully that'll help you out. Well, I've sent many emails to ACB community, you mm -hmm. know, to different people and different, but I have gotten no God. response. Whatsoever. Check your junk mail too, because that, that's not normal. So I'd make sure you're checking your junk mail as well. And make sure you're sending the email to your community at acb.org. Yep. Okay, well, I'll try all those things and hopefully I'll be happy tomorrow morning. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Just go you. to acb.community and that'll take you to that page. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thanks. Who do we got next, Monica? Lisa G. Hey, Lisa. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. I lowered my hand instead of unmuting. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I wanted to um, give an update and a okay. big thank you. Okay. Big thank you. I have been struggling with Zoom, the one tap mobile for months. I mean, really just gotten out of control. And you gave me the Zoom um, email address and I sent them an email. And then they, and I said, I said, I'm depressed. Like I can't, you know, I need, you know, I need to get into the community. It's, it's a lifeline for me. It's very explicit. And um, they said, what's the problem? And just, the day before, there were three calls I could not get into with the one tap mobile. And I told them pressing the numbers takes too long. I'm always getting thrown out. So they, um, I don't know what they did. I sent them that. I haven't heard from them again. I said, please let me know what's going on. And I have been able, I got into this call. I couldn't get into this call with the one tap mobile. So now all of a sudden it's like magic. I don't know what they did or how it happened, but now it works. So thank you. Did so they very make you much. do an update or anything, or what did they do? You don't know what nope. they do. do anything, but well, that no just idea. yep, that just tells you. And and I'm going to go ahead and actually send this podcast over to the access team because 
we're all guilty of saying, hey, this isn't working. But now that it sounds like they hopefully have fixed it, we'll definitely share that positive feedback with them. And thank you uh, to let us know that hopefully that has fixed it and you are now able to use one touch dialing. Thank you. And I'm, I hope that other people who hear this will, will email Zoom. Can you repeat that Zoom email for people who might be listening? And Certainly. It's access can, at zoom.us. Yep. Access at zoom.us. You're awesome. Thank you so very much. No problem. Thank you, Lisa. Yep. Thank you. Who do we got next, Monica? I don't know if Herbie has another question in Clubhouse. Or maybe I forgot to lower his hand. But if he doesn't, we can go to Greg. He went away. So Greg is... So let's go to Greg. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Good. So um, my question is, I have an iPhone 8, and I know everybody's saying dinosaur, dinosaur in the background, but um, I'm happy with my iPhone 8. Um, What can I do to preserve that? you know, as long as possible, what should I be doing uh, to, um, to, you know, continue to make it work as long as possible? Well, so the first thing I would tell you is that my dad also had an iPhone 8 Plus up until about a week ago. And he got it when they came out. And the only reason why he finally got a new phone was because it would stop charging. The battery just was completely kaput on it. And when he went to go get a new phone, he traded it in and they gave him $800 towards a new phone. And I couldn't believe it. I was blown away by that. Um, uh, the first couple of things I would say is make sure that you... Um, do the battery optimization so that you know your battery will last as long as it possibly will. And what that means is you just go in and make sure that it's set to the setting where it will charge up to a certain point and then it will stop charging until it knows around the time that you wake up and then it will charge the last 20%. And what that does is it doesn't keep your battery charging, charging, charging all the time and burn your battery out. So definitely make sure you're doing that. It'll make your battery last longer. And then I don't know how big of a hard drive space you have on your phone, but I would definitely make sure you keep hard drive space free. You need usually about 15 to 20% of free space for your a device to run at optimal level and it, keep it updated to as much as you can until it won't let you anymore. Those are the three things I would say to do right out of the gate. Yeah. One thing I, and one thing oh. I'll tell you, Triple G, is uh, this iOS 16 is the last update you will receive on that iPhone 8. Uh, the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 or X will not be supported for iOS 17. Uh, iOS 17 will only go back as the XR. Okay, but it it shouldn't, as long as I check my storage and do you know how to do that? It shouldn't affect, you know, other apps that I download, um, correct? As long as my storage is is good and, you know. The only thing you're really going to have, oh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. I was just going to say, yep. So you can just go to settings, general and storage and check the storage uh, of your phone if that's what you're asking. And that won't really affect it unless you fill up your storage, Marty. I was going to say right now, you're probably not going to notice really much of anything. But as time goes on, once they down, once they release 17 and then that starts getting going, you'll notice that you're probably going to start having apps that may not work on your phone. Your web browser may not work on every website because you're only going to get to a certain point and then it's going to start having security issues and things will get updated, but you won't be. So that's when you start having issues, once it gets really far away from being able to get updated anymore. Okay, I know. Call me a dinosaur, but I'm just, you know, I just like things. You know, that that iPhone SE 2022 has a very similar form factor to the iPhone 8, and you'll be very comfortable, and it'll give you a lot faster of a device, and you get to keep all the features you like. Just just throwing that out there. Okay, thank you. No problem. I do see we have another hand. So I'm going to go over to Monica and ask her who that is in a moment. But before we do that, uh, Michael D., uh, um, if you don't mind, after we take this question, uh, getting ready to unmute to share some stuff with us. So who do we have next, Monica? We have Kim. Hey, Kim. Hello. Um, I think you probably just answered my question. Um, They do have 
an FE22? Yes. Okay. And yep. are they going to are they going to keep making those hopefully? They we don't said one way or the other yet. Yeah, we don't know what Apple's going to do. Hopefully they will, but we don't know. Yeah. I will say though the SE22 currently has the same processor in it as what's out now. So you're pretty up to date on that. They only mm-hmm. make it in a regular size though. They don't make it in a plus or a large size. So okay. that's, you know, it it is yeah, what it is. I I still want it to go in my pocket and I still want my home button. I love my home button. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it, I would do it probably sooner than later because we don't know if they're going to discontinue it or not. You're getting right. a pretty current processor and you can still upgrade the hard drive. I believe 256 is the max on that device. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That should be good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All righty. Michael, are you there? I am here. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank Hello. you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we w- we wanted Michael to come on and uh, come share some information with people because uh, he's he's an intelligent guy who's always got his fingers in a lot of different things. <laughs> and one thing didn't work out, so he may be back next week. We'll see. But I said, well, what can we have you come talk about? And I think you've been working on something. Do you want to share a little bit about what you've been working on? I do. So I've been working uh, with... Uh, Jeff and the ACB media team for quite some time, and uh, uh, everybody is great, and it's been awesome doing this again. But uh, we've been working on an update to ACB Link, the iOS version of ACB Link, the uh, the app that lets you uh, connect to ACB Media, find out more about your affiliate, your closest affiliates, and to learn more about the American Council of the Blind in general. And we have not put out an update in quite some time. And so we thought, you know, it would be a good idea to do this. And so ACB Media, I mean, ACB Link 3.0 is now, uh, we've been working on that for a little while. And so I'm very happy to be able to announce as of about 10 seconds ago (laughs) that the app is now released in both the iOS and Mac app stores. It's out so, in the wild now. It's out in the wild now. It'll probably take some time for it to show up for everybody to download, but it is now live now. So a lot of things have been streamlined. A lot of things mm-hmm. have been really improved in this version. Uh, if you've used the app in the past, uh, you know it's been great, but it's even better now. So, Michael, what you you've been testing yeah. it? What are your thoughts of it? Oh, I love this. I'm going to show people the iPhone uh, real quick. I'm not going to plug it into the mixer, but I'll bring it close to the uh, microphone so you guys can hear it. So uh, let me turn my speech right down a little bit. All right. So uh, as you can see across the bottom now, tab there's... Bar, home, tab, one of five. Affiliate, tab, two of five. Selected, streams, tab, three of five. Podcast, tab, four of five. About, tab, five of five. And so as you heard, it said streams tab selected. Now here's my favorite part, because that means I open the app and it, it, as of, well, maybe because I didn't close out the app switch or Michael can clarify, but it automatically put me on the streams tab. If it didn't, all I do is tap that middle tab in the, at the bottom. And then of course I'm getting a phone call because that's what happens while we're doing stuff live. But you heard it say ACB media five, which is about a third of the way up the page. Watch this double tap. ACB Media Streams, heading. And of course, it's probably... ACB Media Streams, heading. So now I'm listening to ACB Media 5. If I don't want to listen to this anymore, now play. I can go... ACB Media 8, ACB Media 8. Now we're on ACB Media that right there is magic to me. Um, the podcast will allow you to uh, search the podcast, it looks like. Is that correct, Michael? That is correct. So you can search through all the podcasts. You can even search individual podcasts. Like you can go through each podcast themselves and do searches on each of of the screens. So all of those things are there. Um, It's a very easy app to navigate and you could use dictation, all of those things. So now you can listen to the streams without needing an A-Lady. You could just do it right on your phone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Your phone or your Mac if you have a Mm -hmm. Mac. what, What is the devices that you can get the app on and computers? So you can download the app on iOS, iPadOS, and now for the first time, 
a native Mac experience is now live. So you'll be able to get the app on the Mac App Store as well as you can on iPhone. You've been able to get the the iPhone app on the Mac, but this is a proper Mac app now. So yeah, very it, exciting. It, it's pretty cool too. Um, and uh, what's really nice about it is there's one table you interact with when you get to the content you want. If you want to go to that tab section, there's a tab bar that you go to and you interact with that and you can choose any of those five tabs and uh, it, it dynamically updates and it's really easy to navigate by a keyboard. So if you already have ACB link, all you need to do is uh, check for updates and then when it's available, you can download it or you can go find ACB link in the app store. Correct, Michael? That's correct. Perfect. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, do you have anything else to say before we go on to the next hand? Oh, I I would like to just share a few thoughts, if that's okay with you guys. Please. Um, yeah, for sure. If, if you guys um, have not been aware, the IACast podcast is back. We've been talking a lot. We've we've done basically a prediction show, and then we did a uh, summary show that will be coming out soon about WWDC. And we kind of go into detail. It was before we really had an understanding of the accessibility of the glasses. So uh, as I posted on social media last night, people are going to get very tired of me talking about these glasses because uh, I use like the Patriot viewpoint to help me enlarge uh, text. And um, my Mastodon just went off, which is going crazy last night whenever I broke the news that we found out about voiceover being on the glasses. So being able to magnify doing all these things and accessible apps on a VR, AR headset is just going to be a huge thing. And I think we're going to be, uh, you know, you guys, I'm sure on Unmute and everywhere else are going to be following this very closely. I think that this 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 WWDC, the OS updates were interesting, but the uh, what we got with the the glasses is going to be even more impressive. So I was very happy to hear during the, the second big presentation they did yesterday, their, that platform state of the, of the union, that uh, we would have accessibility features. And they're even doing sessions throughout the week on how developers can make their apps and games accessible on this headset. So that's all very exciting. So that's everything I yeah. wanted to share. So thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming and sharing that. And as I also, when I shared your post on Mastodon, say uh, it was yours or someone else's, said, you know, this is a, a great time to be in. I am I was excited for this WWDC, and I'm more excited for next year's because hopefully this will be out in the wild for a couple of months and mm-hmm. we'll be able to see what people have done with it. And y'all know I'll have one as soon as they're... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Michael. Monica, who do we have next? Thanks, Michael. We have Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Thanks for your presence. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. I This has probably been since the latest version of iOS, but every once in a while I'm in my email and it, a mail will come in that was something I sent out like a week or two before to someone. And it's like... Yep. Almost like a reminder or something. <laughs> and, it, and it shows up at the top of your inbox. And yeah. it's it's like, did I send this? Like, what is this? It drove me crazy until I figured out what was going on. So what's going okay. on is Apple has decided in their infinite wisdom that they want to be our reminders in our email. So if you send an email to someone, and I believe you can go into your mail settings and turn this off. But if you okay. send an email to someone and they don't respond to that email with in 72 hours, it will resurface the message. And as you will read in it, um, it says something like reminder or resending or something like that. And yeah. I, at yeah. first that I resent, I'm like, I, do, I don't remember yeah. resending that email. But no, it's just a reminder for you in your inbox that they have not okay. replied to a message you sent them. And okay. I think the, I've, I've, I know where you're coming from. I've experienced that a few times at this point. And I think the idea is good, but the implementation is not that good because they don't really (laughs) tell you exactly what it is. It's just all of a sudden shows up in your inbox and you're like, wait, what? It doesn't make any sense, really. Yeah. And I keep thinking, well, maybe the message is at the bottom. You know how sometimes people tap too many times and the message that they write back is on the bottom. (laughs) No, no, that's. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You're not crazy. It's that's what's going on. (laughs) Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Who do we got next, Monica? We have Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. How's it going? All right. 
Well, okay. How do you turn that off? First of all, um, I will have to look that up and let you know for sure because there is a way to turn oh. it off. But I will see if I can find that. Probably be under mail or setting. Yeah, it's mail. like settings, mail, and then Maybe in there, there's a preference to turn it off. I through think. that. Uh, also, so so to getting to my question then. I understand Blind Shell was supposed to make some major announcement today that about some new app or something they're adding a new so, app or a new. Yeah, I know that there was. So Diane was on vacation last week, who does the Blind right. Shell 101 calls, and there was a mix up. And uh, so the call wasn't canceled yesterday. What I can tell you is Blind Shell has a Thursday call this week called Talking Points. So if you're not subscribed to blindshellusa.com slash talking points, probably go over there, there. That's all the information that I have. Well, <laughs> I was just curious. I'm not that interested. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not urgent if I don't have a blind. No, no, because I was on the I call last Monday when that. Diane said, next Tuesday we'll have a new app. And uh, yeah, so oh, yeah. I would go to the Thursday that, call and see if they have any updates. Yeah. Or I'm sure I'll hear about it sooner or later. But I, Probably. <laughs> I, I have, I, I keep abreast with from many sources. So uh, you'll definitely hear about it. I'll hear about it then. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Who do we got next, Monica? We have Beth back. Hey, Beth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the app you were talking about, about, about the ACB. Yep. Uh, uh, well, well, that, see, I can go on my phone to ACB Media 5. It does um, tell me a link, but that goes to Safari, right? Yep. This is, this is completely different. That's what I was demonstrating. So the current ACB link app, um, it does bring up a page and then you got to find the little play button and then play that, um, the update that is out. So you would want to go check for any updates, sometimes okay. going and doing a search for the app and bringing the app up itself and three finger flicking down to reload the page, uh, can bring that update available. But now what happens is you tap on streams at the bottom and then you tap the stream number you want and then it starts playback there's no going to find a play button no swiping around it's streams and then the number you want and it's playing oh cool yeah 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 because i want to um know if it has like um the radio the acb radio and the it only has the ACB. cafe is yep cafe is on there it's oh, all the music, it's all 10 of the streams the that music. are available yep okay yeah and um i was gonna ask about my media player on my computer i tried what you told me to try to shift f10 mm -hmm. and and it does not say um anything about playlists so okay uh i am not that familiar with media player beth um so maybe there's some other people that are listening that might have some additional resources and if they do hopefully they'll call in or they'll uh email us to let us pass that along to you okay Oh, sure. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Beth. Mm -hmm. who, who do we got thanks. next, Monica? Next, we have yes. Astoria. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? A couple of weeks ago, you told us how to uh, get rid of the, uh, and I don't know, I can't remember the terminology, but when you search for something um, to get rid of that list, uh, the history. What device are you talking about on which device? Uh, I have an Android phone and I have an iPad. Okay. And where are you searching that you want to get rid of the history from? Uh, Google, I guess. Gotcha. Okay. So what you can do is you can go to google.com slash account and there's an option to clear your Google history there. Um, and it is a pretty seamless process if that's what you're looking for. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly what, yeah. what Go you're looking to clear. Google. Uh, would you repeat that? Yep. Google.com slash account. Okay. And then you can clear your hist your account history there as well. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. And I did reply to your email. It took me a little while, but I did get back <laughs> to you. Okay. So. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It was Perfect. Thanks okay. for calling in. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Who do we got next, Monica? We have Greg. Hey, Greg. Hello. How are um, you doing? Again, I'm good. I'm still good. Um, and I'm still a dinosaur. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, I have a question regarding deleting a row of um, on Excel with JAWS. Now, I, it's a whole row 
that mm-hmm. I want to delete. Actually, it's quite a few rows. Um, I'm doing something for um, ACB students right now, an affiliate I'm working with, and I need to delete several rows. How do I do that? So I forget the keystroke, but I can tell you, and uh, someone may have a different or faster, easier way to do it because I'm not seeing we have any hands right now. But I can tell you if you do alt Q like Quebec, that'll put you in a search and then you can just type in delete and delete rows should be one of the options that pops up. Okay. Okay. And can I ask one more question? Um, Certainly. Just Google Google Docs is always, always, always been confusing to me no matter how many YouTube videos I watch on it. I, I'm just wondering if you know of a good way. I'm a JAWS user, but if you know of the best way for me to work with Google Docs, because like just typing into it and just, you know, just it's it's not been very, very friendly, you know, to me. So I told you about a keystroke in uh, Excel called Alt-Q to search the menus. Um, in Google Docs, there's a keystroke, which is Alt-Slash, and that brings you to search menus. Type in accessibility and make sure that you have screen reader access on and Braille access on, because that will improve the experience, even if you're not using a Braille display. Uh, make sure that you turn your JAWS cursor off with JAWS key plus Z. And then you should be able to use your up and down arrow keys like you normally would, select text like you would, and use control B, control I, et cetera, uh, like you're familiar with in Word. And that might help you a little. Okay. Thank you. The dinosaur is out. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank Who you. Who got next, Monica? Hervey. All right. Well, first of all, I just got to ask, and uh, this is rhetorical, but you no, know, is the dinosaur going to get on the Mastodon? But uh, I digress. Uh, Chanel. Yes. So a couple things. Um, If you're for some reason ever using a Mac, don't turn on Braille support in Google Sheets because it kind of doesn't work very well. (sighs) Good Um, to know. Yeah. And so this new app, by the way, is it also called ACB Link in the Mac App Store? Yep. Okay, because I'm no, not. It just came it yet, out, maybe. so it might take a little while for it to uh, get around for everyone to be able to see it. I think literally it's came out in the last like 20 minutes or so. So it might take oh, a little okay. bit for it to show up for everyone. So just give it a little time, but probably, you know, by this afternoon, everyone will be able to see it, I'm assuming. And then, because I know in the iPhone app, I really haven't used it a lot because you have to go to streams yep. or you have to go to. Radio, the then then streams, then the name. So hopefully it's a little bit easier. So uh, I've been testing this to give some feedback to help uh, make it a, a great experience. I will tell you, I have used ACB Media and listened to ACB Media in the last week and a half more than I have in the last three years because all I have to do is okay. open the app, tap streams, and then tap the stream number I want to listen to. It's it's that simple. No more finding the play button or anything else, which I'm super excited to use it okay. during convention because, as you know, they're on different channels, so you can just switch back and forth between the different channels. And Michael, what is yeah. the exact name so people know exactly what to look for? Uh, ACB link. So yeah, you're looking for ACB link. And go ahead, Chanel. You had another question. We cut you and off. Sorry. One other thing. Um, you mentioned or Herbie sent me something you shared the other day. I don't know if it was you or whatever, but on the new Mac OS, you don't have to turn on Quick Nav to use Quick Keys. I'm- so I have not installed this. I cannot speak directly, but it is my understanding that you can just use like H to jump to headings or shift H to jump to previous headings and not have to use quick nav. That could oh, be incorrect. Awesome. Again, that was as of yesterday's beta one first day. So very cool. Yes. Stuff is being done with voiceover. I can't guarantee awesome. what okay. is being done. So Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Hey, Monica, next. We have Desi. Hey, Desi. How's it going? Good morning. It's going great. Um, I love this call. So thanks so much for that. Um, I wanted to ask you about an an app that a friend of mine told me about. And I believe she said it was called Zoom Cuts. Is that? Mm -hmm. What what is it? What does it do? And why should I want it? 
<laughs> so I don't know why you should want it. It is an app that was released yesterday. So what I know is very limited. It is a tool that implements about 13 different shortcut actions into shortcuts on the Mac for using with Zoom. Uh, what that means is potentially you could set up a shortcut that you have a keystroke that, I don't know, lists off the, the raised hands or something like that. So mm. I don't know the details for it yet. I will have more details probably by the end of this week because it is something I am very intrigued by. And it's made by a company that was uh, purchased by Zoom itself. And that company released a software because Zoom has become more... Uh, synonymous in the broadcasting industry. A lot of your uh, broadcasters use Zoom to bring multiple sources together now, both in mm. audio and video. And so there's been some companies out there that have created more advanced interfaces to Zoom. So for example, if you're in a live environment and you want to take Desi's audio and separate it from everyone else's audio and send it to the overhead speakers, and then uh, while the host is getting other people muted, the only person you hear is Desi you have that type of flexibility with the zoom ISO tool it I can't wow. speak to accessibility it does only work mm. on the Mac uh, I will say that from the test that I have done with it and played with it it looks like it's fairly usable um, if not with just voiceover but using tools like VOCR and uh, other tools out there to make things that aren't the most accessible accessible so it's something I think you'll start hearing more about in the near future zoom cuts and zoom ISO Okay, and then my only other question is, um, because I have returned to the Mac, which I'm so delighted about. Welcome um, back. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, I, I got the Mac Mini M2, and yeah, it's it's going really well. Although I am finding it not as intuitive as I thought I remembered it being several years ago. Um, some of the things that I try to do don't necessarily work, and I find myself getting frustrated sometimes and having to walk away and come back later. And sometimes that does work. But I was curious to know if you know where I can get a comprehensive listing of Mac commands, you know, just general Mac commands. For I, I mean, I know that it's possible to go through the menus and look at all the commands there, but I would, I would love to have just a compendium, if you will, of Mac commands. You're talking about just in general, or are you talking about voiceover? Well, well, in general, but I mean, all those commands work with voiceover as well, right? And voiceover commands too. So, Desi. All I'm commands. Gonna, I'm going to give you the obvious answer. <laughs> I Googled it. Mac keystrokes. And the first thing that came up is an Apple Help Center article that says Mac keyboard shortcuts. So there's that. And then there's also an article from Computer World that has 30 Mac keystrokes. Um, so that might be helpful for you as well. I have uh, some too, which yeah. if you want to email feedback at unmute.cho, I can send those over to you. Great. Thanks and so I much. will make one other recommendation. If you really, mm -hmm. really want to get familiar with your Mac and get more fluid with uh, using your Mac, Chanel has a great uh, class that she teaches. So oh, you should reach does. out to yeah. her and get all yeah. the details and oh, uh, yeah. do I, that class. Chanel You'll definitely I... learn a bunch. Chanel and I have been talking, and unfortunately, the next one of those isn't until September, but I'm ready to be there when it is. So, <laughs> very good. Uh, yeah. All thanks, right. Debbie. Thanks a lot. We've got about 12 minutes left. Who do we got next, Monica? Yeah, I'm Deborah. Hey, Deborah. How you doing? Hi. Um, I got an iPad Pro, and I use the wireless keyboard. Will it work almost like the Mac? You got what? So, did you get the keyboard that? plugs into the little magnetic piece on the bottom of your iPad, or is it just a regular Bluetooth keyboard? The Bluetooth. I did order the one that's attached to it, but it's not an Apple product, but I can't see where the, you know, the keys are, so I end up using the wireless. Right. So a Bluetooth keyboard will work on a Mac, but you have to make sure that the Bluetooth keyboard you have will work on multiple devices. Otherwise, if it does not work on multiple devices, then you would have to re-sync it to the new device. So you would want to make sure that the keyboard you're using would be able to work on multiple devices, if that's what no, you what want I'm to do. what I'm saying is uh, instead of buying a Mac computer, there's an iPad Pro. 
can it function the same way? Gotcha. So there are keystrokes that you can use on the iPad that would let you navigate it as fluidly as you could on a Mac and, and you know, use like command S to save. What I'd recommend you doing is, are you a voiceover user? I'm trying to learn to do that. Yes. Trying to oh. learn some of the hot keys and I don't know all of them yet. Gotcha. So there are some great resources. Marty may know one or two that can give you some uh, keyboard commands to use on the iPad. But yes, you can you can do a lot of the things you can do on an iPad Pro is what you could do on a Mac with a Bluetooth keyboard. Okay. So how do I want to get some of those hot keys then? Um. So the best way. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. Uh, is if I go and I type in best keystrokes for iPad, it does bring up a help article, it looks like, from uh, Apple. Uh, and it gives you a couple of common support, uh, or a common, commonly supported keystroke. So if you're able to get to Google, then just type in keystrokes for iPad, and uh, Google gives you five right here that you can start using in your workflow. Thank you. No problem, hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Best keystroke. Google. Yep, best keystrokes for iPad. Make sure to put for iPad on there, or it's going to give you all types of keystrokes. <laughs> okay, thank you. No problem. Monica. Lisa G. Hey, Lisa. <clears throat> Hi. I just had an idea on what I use for the past two people. Whenever I want to know anything about strokes or key, you know, what, what shortcuts, I call up Apple and I'll either call up the accessibility and I'll, and, and I'll ask them. Um, if they could email it to me, because they can email me the strokes if I tell them, especially if I'm looking for something in particular, like if they have a list of basic stro uh, strokes or things that, that would help me. And I always ask them, I say, so do you have any little tips or tricks that you know, you know, for people with vision issues? And when you get new people, sometimes they have no idea. Right. But you'd be surprised at what you learn just by asking that question. I find it kind of cool. Oh, that's just my two cents. Thanks. Lisa, I appreciate you bringing that up because sometimes we don't think about the obvious and that is just picking up that phone, call the uh, either general support team because, you know, sighted individuals use keyboards too. So there's no need to just say, what are the, the keystrokes for blind people or contact those accessibility numbers because that's a good resource to have as well. So thank you, Lisa. Really appreciate that. Yep. Well, and I've actually you. had them send keyboard shortcuts to, you know, by email and they do do that. So that's a great resource. Who do we got next, Monica? We'll go to Eugenia. Hey, Eugenia. Hi. Hi. Um, for the person that uh, was asking about the keyboard for the iPad Pro, uh, there is a class that uh, is starting now in, in June at Bray Institute, um, Laguna Hills. So if she can find the um, uh, class catalog uh, for Bray Institute. Uh, they will have there, they have um, the keyboard with the iPhone in the afternoon. And on Mondays at 10 a.m., they have the keyboard uh, for iPad. And Perfect. they teach that class twice a semester. So I, I'm hey. taking it. That's what I know about it. Yes. Well, good. Thank you for that. And see, we can't know about all these resources. So that class is available. So search for Braille Institute and uh, classes. La it Go ahead. Laguna Hills, yeah. Laguna Hills. The, the gotcha. center, yeah, they have several centers, but this one is from uh, this person in Laguna Hills Center. That's in Southern California, yeah. Perfect. And do you know if they do virtual classes or are they only in Oh, person? that's virtual. Oh, no, okay. totally. Perfect. Yeah, it's too far from me. Yeah. Okay, good, virtual. good. So, so that okay. is a good resource. And thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Monica. And our last hand for now is Kim. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kim. Hey. Uh, just for the person who was asking about keystrokes and all that, I, you know, I've taken the Apple class, and um, but there are times when I still forget, and I look back at my notes, and I'm like, boy, I took rotten notes this time. Mm. Anyway, National Braille Press has the Mac reference cards. That that problem. I don't think it has all the shortcuts. But it have the basic command for the Mac, and it's just um, the Mac reference card. Yeah, I see it. 
I see that right here. It looks like it is for Big Sur, but that would give you some getting started details for using the map because a lot of those keystrokes haven't changed. They've just added new ones. So thank you, Kim, for bringing that up. That's uh, okay. NBP. You can get that at nbp.org, uh, uh, and that'll get you over to the National Braille Press. And we are getting mm. tight on time, so let's try and... Let's do one not- more hand here, Monica, we'll, and then we'll, we'll close take, it up. We'll take Lori. Hey, Lori. Hey, Lori. Okay, hi. To keep with the theme of the keystrokes, don't forget that you can still go into voiceover and commands, and you can touch keystrokes, and it'll give you a whole list of keystrokes. The keyboard with the iPad also, if I remember correctly, it used to work. I haven't done it in a long time. You can either hit the command key or the control key, and it'll pull up those shortcut keystrokes for that app that you're in. Oh yeah, that globe key. Hit that in the back in the bottom corner. Right. Perfect. Alrighty. Thank, thank you. you very much. No problem. Michael D has his hand up. Do you want to throw something in really quick, Michael D? I'm guessing not. So all right. Oh, real quick, I didn't yeah. know I was muted on both places. <clears throat> the holding the command key on the iPad is currently bugged with voiceover. So it will bring up those keystrokes, but it does not read. Good to know. Yeah, but plenty of other resources yes. out there to get the keystrokes for sure. And uh, with that, I want to thank Michael for coming and sharing information about what we've got going on with ACB Link. Go check that out if you haven't yet. And Monica for hosting us. Marty, you want to close it up? Yep. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate you coming. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and email us feedback at unmute.show. And uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.